In this video I'm going to show you how to simulate a simple circuit Logisim and then we're going to look at how to create a hierarchy in order to generate a more complicated circuit using a series of simple circuits. So let's get started and let's get it done. So when you open up Logisim your page should look like this. You'll notice that there's a little circle here and we're on this page called Main. This main is a rough copy, this is where we design all our circuits. So let's go ahead and we'll design our first circuit in under a minute. We're going to look at simulating a simple AND gate. So you've got access to some of the gates here. All the rest of the gates are in this gate section here. So we'll grab an AND gate. That's an AND gate there. We'll place it down. And we can change the number of inputs from 5 to 2. So now we've got two inputs in blue and one input output in red. If we hover over the input, you see the green circle, we can left click and drag and it'll create a wire. Again, circle, left click and drag and we've got another wire. So let's do the same for the output. Now we've got to place pins down so we can place an input pin. So this is an input pin here. You can also get the pin in the wiring section here. We place the pin. Now we'll get another pin and we'll place it down. And now we'll get the output pin, and this is the output pin here. And the output pin is in blue. Now we'll connect the pins to the wire. Connect there, there, and there. Now in order to run the simulation, we've got to go up to the little finger section. So we click on that. Now you'll see that the inputs are both low, they're both zero, and the output is zero. And all of the wires are a dark green colour, so the dark green is a zero. So in order to simulate it, you just simply click on the input. So if I click on this, it goes high, and it's a light green colour for high. But this is an AND gate, so we only get an output whenever both inputs go high. So if I was to turn that input high, we still wouldn't have an output. But whenever we make both inputs high, we get a high output. So that's us simulated our very first circuit in Logisim in under a minute. And you can analyse the circuit as well if you go into project, analyse circuit, click on table and it shows you the truth table for that circuit. So with an AND gate you only get an output when both A and B are high. So that is how easy it is to simulate circuits in Logisim. So let's crack on and we'll design an entire CPU. So now we've seen how to simulate a circuit in Logisim. Let's go ahead and we'll start building hierarchies. So let me show you what I mean by that. We take the circuit that we designed earlier, which is our simple AND gate. Now let's change it a little bit and we'll change it into a NAND gate. So we can put in a NOT gate here. Now a NOT gate will take in a 1 and give out a 0, or it'll take out a 0 and give out a 1. And if we were to place the NOT gate here, then we would have a, an AND gate and a NOT gate, so this will give us a, a NOT AND, or we call it a NAND gate. So let's go ahead and we'll build a hierarchy for this new circuit. So we'll go ahead and press project, add circuit, and we'll call it NAND. And you'll see that there's a NAND instance appeared here, but there's nothing in it. So what we have to do is we have to get into a rough copy, which is main. And we can cut this, so control X, and we can place it into NAND, control V. So now we have the NAND circuit inside this little NAND instance. So what we can do now is we right click the NAND and we click on edit circuit appearance. So this is, this is how the circuit will appear in the hierarchy. Now it's not very much to look at here, so what we want to do is redo that. Now there's lots of different shapes here that you can use. But let's just keep it simple just now and we'll just replace it with a, a simple box. So what we can do then is we can take our in output and place our output over here. And we can take our two inputs A and B and place our inputs here. We can delete off this, don't need it, and we can shift this little section here over. Now, we're going to give the pins here names, but you might be wondering if you had a really complicated circuit, how do you know which pin is which? 
Well, if you were to click on the pin, it will show you in the bottom right hand corner. So you can see it's moving about in between the pins and you can see which one is which. So we'll give the pins names. So we just click on the text, which is an A, and we'll call this one A, and then B, and then we'll give an O for output, and we'll call our instance NAND. And then we can shift these up into our instance. And that's us created our NAND gate. Now, this NAND gate is going to be available to us within the main. So if I go to main here, it's empty. I can choose the NAND gate and I can move that instance over. And that's us created our first instance. So we can go down inside this instance. If we right click and we press view NAND, that's us went down into the hierarchy that we just created. So we can go back to our top level just by clicking on our main. And now what we can do is we can take copies of these and we can create another circuit. So let's go and do that now. So this has created a new circuit using four of our NAND gates and using a four input NOR gate. So let's go ahead and we'll stick our pins in. So we have our output pin here. Now we could connect eight input pins, but we're not going to do that. What we want to do is connect all these together in a bus and take it out as a bus. So let's do that now. If we go into the wiring section, you'll find this thing called a splitter. So if we connect, click on the splitter and we can change the number of pins the splitter to 8 so if we change these to 8 the fan at the the bit width and also the fan out now you can note here that you've got number 0 to 7 here you can change these round in a different direction by changing these numbers here but, but that's just going to complicate things for the moment we don't need to do that so we'll just leave it as is so let's go ahead and we'll connect the whole thing up So that's it all connected up. All we have to do now is put an input pin. Now you'll notice I get an error here whenever I place that pin. It actually says at the bottom of the screen, incompatible widths, because we're trying to connect a 1-bit pin into an 8-bit bus. So we have to change the data bits here for the pin to 8. Now we can also name the pins. So we can call this pin here I for input and we'll call this pin here O for output. So now that we've built this circuit let's go ahead one more time and we'll produce a hierarchy for this circuit here. So we go to project add circuit and we'll call this C1. So you can see C1's appeared here so again we can get to main and we can copy our circuit. Control X and we can place it into C1, Control V. So this has got our circuit here in C1. So now we can go ahead and we can change the appearance of that circuit in the hierarchy. So we go into Edit Circuit Appearance. And again, we've got this little drawn here of the circuit. So we'll change this and just create another block. So we can take these, the output, and shift over here. And we can take the input, shift over here. We'll delete this off. And we can take this as well, place over here. And we'll give these names. So again, we go to A, which is the text. And we'll just call that A. And we'll call it B. We'll call it O for out. And also, we'll call the circuit C1. So we can place these in to our instance. A. Right, we only need A and O, we don't need B. And this is a C1. So this has created our new instance. So that means that this is going to be available to us again within the main section. So we go to main, it's empty, and we can start building 
circuits up with the two new circuits we just created. So we can take an AND gate, and we could take another NAND gate, and we could take a couple of these C1s as well. And we can start building up and join, joining these together and build up another hierarchy from these. So that's how we build up hierarchies, and that's how we create a complicated circuit from a series of little simple circuits. So let's have a look at a few of the other things we're going to use in Logisim. If you get to the wiring section, we're going to be using the splitter. We've seen that. We've seen the pin. We're going to be using the, the tunnel as well. So when I click on a tunnel, that allows us to connect two points together without actually having a wire. So for example here, I have this point here, which is the pin A. So if I was to connect that there, and I give this tunnel a name, so I could just call it A. Then if I was to take a copy of this tunnel, and then move the copy of the tunnel down, wherever I move this to, it will give us the same value as A. So when I connect it onto this point here, then you see this goes green, because this point here is in effect this point here. So that's all a tunnel does. It makes it easier to connect things together, and we'd have less wires cluttering up our drawings. We have another thing here uh, called the clock. So if I click on this here, and I then go on to the simulation section, you can see here that I can tick this clock by just clicking it with my mouse button. And you'll see it goes high and low, high and low. I can also run a simulation. If I click into simulate and I click tick enable, then it'll click this clock high and low. And it'll continue doing it until I click tick enable once more and it stops. We can also have a constant value as well. So I could take out a value of 1 and I can connect it on, say, here. And whenever I connect it to this point, it just turns that point high. We will be using the anything else in here. In the gate section, we're going to be using the standard gates, not, buffer, and, or, NAND, nor, X, or. And we're going to be using the control buffer as well. We won't be using anything in this plexer section. We're going to build them all up ourselves. And we won't be build, using anything from the arith arithmetic section. We'll build everything ourselves. And the same for the memory section. We'll build everything else up ourselves. The only things that we're going to be using are the displays. So we'll be using one of these seven segments. Uh, we'll be using the seven segment displays and also this LED and also this button. So that's pretty much everything that we're going to use in Logisim. So now we know how to run Logisim. We've learned about 95% of everything we need to know about Logisim. We'll learn the other 5% as we continue building the CPU. So that's enough of this. Let's get cracking and let's build a CPU.